Right, so before I can install my transaxle here, or gearbox, I need to fit my rear torsion bars and spring plates and set them up. Now, uh, I would like to show you something very interesting when it comes to adjusting the rear suspension on a swing axle beetle. Coming up. So just in case it's your first time here in my forest shop, my name is Duff, firstly, <laughs> and I'm working on the Renobuck project. It's a 1959 Renault 4CV body that I've started customizing. And I'm marrying it to a 1971 VW Beetle floor pan that has already been shortened. There's a number of videos about the project already under the playlist, the Reno Bug, if you want to go and check it out. Hey, so I'm going to break tradition here. Normally I only post videos on the Reno Bug project on Wednesdays. But I'm now so keen to turn this floor pan into a roller that I'm doing some extra videos Shall we call them bonus videos? <laughs> Let's go! I've got my two swing axle beetle torsion bars here on the workbench because I'd like to show you some interesting stuff. So first of all these chappies are stamped here an R for right and L for left. So yes, they do need to go in, in a specific way. I'm not really sure why. It's like that. Um, my best figuring <laughs> would be that uh, once it's been working for a while they must obviously build a memory in the steel and if you were to then take them out and swap them around it might not be a good thing i don't know if you know of a good reason i'd like to read it in the comments but the thing is we've got a left hand one and a right hand one so they need to go back in the same way. So now here is another very interesting thing. If you go to the trouble to count these splines, you will count 44 splines on the outside and 40 splines here on the inside. This is the inside of the torsion bar. So the swing plate would fit on this side. Now why would that be? I tell you it's actually freaking amazing Ferdinand and his team of engineers were actually very clever. Let me show you why I say that. So I scribbled a little on my whiteboard. Check this. There's 360 degrees in a circle, right? So if I take 360 degrees and I divide it with 40 splines, I get 9 degrees per spline. If I take 360 degrees and I divide it with 44 splines, I get 8.181818 on and on and on degrees per spline. So the difference between the two is 0 0.81818 and on and on degrees. This means that you can actually adjust the swing plate with less than a degree at a time. 0 0.18 degrees to be more exact. Now, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but I think it's freaking amazing that you are able to adjust your swing plates to less than one degree at a time. So I'm referring to this angle here. Here's my swing plate. And if I do it right, we are able to change this angle with increments of only 0 0.82 degrees. We're not gonna take it. Okay, it's such a school, cool old school rock song on the radio, but I can't play it for you. Copyright issues and all of that. And I also know why I will never be a rock star. <laughs> anyway, let's see if we can make this more real. So I've got my spring plate and my torsion bar. Now if I adjust the spring plate downwards with one spline on the inside, where I have 40 splines, we will get an angle change of 9 degrees. Okay, now on the outer side I've got 44 splines. So if I then adjust my spring plate up with one spline, I'm changing 8.18 degrees, right? So what is the net result? 9 down, 
8.18 up. So I ended up with an angle change of only 0 0.818 degrees downwards. So that just shows you how accurately you can actually set up the rear suspension on a swing axle beetle. It's quite amazing. Okay, back on the pan, I've pushed the torsion bar into its housing. How on this one because I'm on the left hand side. Got my swing plate in place and it's currently just pretty much a random setting. Um, I like to show you something, there's a lip here, if you can see there, that prevents further downwards movement. And on the stock beetle, the spring plate actually sits past that lip a little bit when you um, have it installed. And then you would have to jack it up and pre-tension it a little bit until it gets past the lip. Now I do want to lower my little beetle some and end up with some negative camber. So that's why I've got it sitting higher. Um, I don't really know what my final setting is going to be yet because I would obviously need the body weight and the engine weight in place. So I'm just going to go with some random setting like this for now. And then we'll fine tune and adjust it once everything and all the body weight is in place. Now I've still got to do my bushes. So I'm going to have to take this out again. Because it's a rubber bush that goes in here. So this is the rubber bush that fits in here. I would have liked some new ones, but I'm finding it difficult to source some at the moment. So I'm just going to use these old ones for now. And if they do turn out to be problematic, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But before I stick it in, I'm just going to coat it with some red rubber grease. Yeah, so whenever I play with grease now, I always think of the barefoot mechanic saying, and he's always fond of saying, lubrication are the solution to all problems. So I'm just going to coat my fingers and my bush, or bushing, I believe I should say bushing and not bush. Depends on where you live, I guess. Um, right, all slippery slidey. Just put some on this side as well. And on the inside. Alright, so now I can stick my slippery slidey bushing in place. Alright, pop this fellow in there. Like that. Now I must find a rag. <laughs> it's also a rubber bushing that must go on here. So let's get this one covered in grease as well. Red rubber grease. Slippery slidey. I'm going to slip this one over like that. And more grease. Okie dokie, I'm ready to stick it in place. Let's get this in here and play with it a little bit. And you know what, I just screwed up, eh? I put the bush on the wrong side. <laughs> oh, now it's becoming slippery. Okay. Shouldn't be on this side, you freaking idiot. Must be on the outside. Asshole. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, I think that's way too high. I think I might settle like that for now. And then we will fine tune it. 
Later. Rag, lappy, as we call it. Where's my rag? Just a smear of copper compound on my retainer plate bolts so that they don't rust and seize up. And now I can fit my retainer plate and bolt it into place. Which will hold everything where it must be. Where is my ratchet? 15 socket metric. So we can tighten this up now. And then we will be good. Until such time as I fine tune this to get my final setting, which will only happen once the body's back on and the engine is in place. So it's still going to be a while. <laughs> Here we go, that's good enough for now. I know I'm going to be taking it off again, so I'm not going to over tighten it too much. But our first one is in place on the left hand side. 20 minutes later. Okay, like I'm in, so I've now got my swing arms fitted on both sides. So I wanted to do the old uh, angle finder thing to ensure that my blades on each side are sitting at the same angle. But now the battery on this thing's flat and I haven't got another one. So let's do this the old fashioned way. I put a white backing there behind. So now if you look carefully in the back there, you can see the other spring plate, just the top edge of it. And you can see the top edge of this spring plate. And we can see that they are parallel to each other. So that must mean that the two angles are exactly the same. Hey, would you guys like to hear what one of our local black radio stations sound like? Listen to this. I bet you didn't understand any of that. Hey, the weather is warming up nicely. I could get rid of the sweater. So like I said, um, the position of my spring plates at the moment is simply a guess. Um, I have no body weight on and all of that. So yeah, once I get my transmission in, engine in place, body back on, then we can evaluate and then we can fine tune them. But for now, this is good enough. So yes, not a long, very long video, I know. But at least I got my spring plates in place, ready to get the transmission in there. Thanks for hanging out with me out here in the shop. I enjoyed your company. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, Walaka one, my brothers. Whatever makes you happy, it just depends on you. So think a little bigger and dream.